John Zogby on the line. Happy New Year, John. Hey, Happy New Year, Bill. How are you? Good. So I'll start with the Hillary uh, question. Mm-hmm. I mean, you are you were there right from the beginning saying Hillary was not going to be the nominee, and look where we are. I, I would assume at this point, do you feel it is pretty inevitable at this point? No. No? No, not really. I, I mean, I think she's in good shape, better shape. Um, but, you know, this is a sequential process, and voters haven't voted yet. Right. Um, so Iowa and New Hampshire could provide surprises. Um, I mean, what I'm what I'm hearing is that she's got a very good ground game, yeah. uh, better than, than 2008. She's prepared on the issues. Um, not entirely sure, sh- and she's connecting with, with her supporters. Not entirely sure there's passion yet. Uh, there is passion on the Sanders side. Um, raised a lot of money in the last quarter, and he could surprise her in Iowa and probably will uh, in, in New Hampshire. And so... From there, it's almost anybody's guess. So do you think that, um, I mean, you don't believe that, that, uh, that Bernie Sanders could be the nominee, do you? I do not. Yeah. No. Uh, what I do think, though, is that, and, I, and nothing is inevitable. Yeah. No one has voted yet. But there is a scenario there where, where Sanders wins the first two. Iowa New Hampshire uh, goes on then uh, to embarrass Hillary in, in Nevada, and then... Uh, a party folks start scratching their heads and saying, yeah. uh, uh, this lady's vulnerable. And what do you think? Is it Biden? Well, I think that that's the, the most logical choice. Uh, there's not much of a bench, you know, but yeah. Biden or Kerry, uh, Tim Kaine from, from Virginia. Now, now, this is just an alternative scenario. I think it's, I think it's possible, very possible, in fact. Uh, okay, so do you think, you know, you say there isn't that uh, that passion. What about the, the most recent attacks that uh, the Trump is making on uh, on Bill Clinton and ultimately on Hillary? And, there, you know, there seems to be talk that there's, uh, you know, this woman that was out there and a few women that have been out there over the years that uh, pr- Trump might bring them up and parade them and have them tell their story. Uh, does, how does that affect Hillary and does it make her stronger? Very good question. You know, among ardent supporters, uh, it it probably does. Um, but the the problem that I have is that uh, when Bill Clinton goes out and campaigns, he generates a lot of enthusiasm, generally for himself and and other candidates. Yeah. Uh, Barack Obama uh, is a prime example. On the other hand, doesn't seem to work so well when he campaigns for Hillary. I guess the two of them together conjure up memories, um, uh, not so good memories. Where we're at right now is that some Democrats are asking themselves the question, why, uh, with our, quote, inevitable candidate, is she running so close, in fact, even behind, um, you know, Marco Rubio, uh, and, and, you know, some of the, one or two, anyway, of the leading Republicans. Um, There could be some serious vulnerabilities here. You know, we've seen a lot of uh, commercials on the other side. Um, uh, Jeb Bush with a lot of commercials. He spent almost uh, more than half what everybody else combined has spent. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's some good commercials. They're really well done, and it takes the debate. Uh, the one commercial I saw, which was one of the uh, the PAC uh, uh, commercials, that it, they they took the debate and really took the best per- part of the performance by Jeb Bush. And then used some things, you know, how they do with the with Trump. And it was there some good spots, but they don't seem to be having any effect at all. No, not really. The there's, the, you know, the built-in problem there is that there, uh, uh, there's an establishment in the party that that likes Jeb Bush, but the other factions do not. Combination of things, you know, maybe too moderate in some instances. Uh, a third Bush, uh, in in other instances, um, but. You can't entirely rule him out, and it's not simply because of the money. It could be one of those things where he may be the last man standing. Yeah. I think it's very doubtful. Hmm. Um, and no, none of the traditional stuff is working. You know, team on the ground, uh, you know, money in the bank, spending a lot on advertising. His only narrow path to the nomination is if everybody else uh, implodes. Uh, do you think we're going to see any surprise in uh, Iowa and New Hampshire? I mean, or is, is Trump going to be the surprise? Uh, 
I think whatever it is, it's going to be a surprise because yeah. simply um, uh, it's uh, uh, people have not voted yet, and uh, while Trump has dominated the headlines, he doesn't have much of a ground game, and he himself is, is even pointed out he's going to spend two million dollars a week in each state. Uh, but what does advertising do for him? Right, he's got about ninety nine, a hundred percent name recognition. You're the forum or against him already. Yeah, it is. Um, uh, and, and really, these these first couple primaries don't don't change. You know, and, and, and when you look at history, it, it doesn't. It never seems to name the uh, name the nominee. However, it could give some legitimacy to to a few. It's all about expectations. Yeah. And one of the things that Trump did yesterday that could come back and haunt him, you know, unless he again knows something that the everyone else, yeah. the rest of us don't know, is, is he said, I'm going to win Iowa. This has always been a very much an expectations game. If you declare I'm going to win Iowa, then you have to win. Yeah. You have to not come in uh, close second place, not uh, perform better. You've got to perform as or better than expected. He raised expectations. Now, again, conventional wisdom uh, suggests that that could be setting yourself uh, up for a fall, especially with Cruz doing so well um, in, in, in Iowa. But, um, uh, you know, Trump has defied every yeah. single rule of engagement so far. Finally, uh, I'll ask you um, your thoughts on the president, and he's talking about executive action when it comes to uh, some gun restrictions. Mm-hmm. Um, what? What? I mean, is that a dangerous move? Are we going down a dangerous move at a very volatile time right now? See, I think that there uh, is almost a national consensus when it comes to closing uh, gun show loopholes. You know, and, and you know some of those tweaks um, that uh, possibly are within the purview of of executive action. Look, uh, the gun lobby does not like him. But he seems to have uh, solidified his support among gun control people. And right now, um, it is probably to his benefit to make sure that that his base is solid because he needs that base to continue to have a very strong gear. He had a very good 2015. Well, it does show you the uh, the divide in the country, doesn't it, and, uh, between the parties? Because uh, the the Democrats have never wanted to get into this gun issue at all. They no. stay completely clear of the issue, but it almost seems as if the divide uh, in terms of mass population, and when you look at the numbers in a, in a general, it seems like they feel they have, they have enough to be able to just take care of their base and still win in a general. And here's, uh, here's the key. <clears throat> um, you have, you've had moments in history where um, the passion rises among gun control activists, but then it subsides. Yeah. Um, Passion has always been there among um, uh, uh, gun rights people. This time, I think what you're, you've seen, especially since um, Newtown, is um, is the passion among uh, gun control supporters uh, is high and it has stayed. And that's the sort of thing that uh, drives people's decisions, makes them vote uh, in in some important instances is a determining factor in terms of who they'll, who they'll support and who they won't support. Yep. And most of the American citizenry, citizenry is not calling it passion. They're calling it anger. And I'm sure you saw this, the NBC News Survey Monkey and Esquire poll that said 54 percent of Americans call themselves angrier this year than they were last year. And 61 percent of Republicans say they are angrier. Yeah. Yeah. The anger is out there. It's palpable. And and. It's very hard uh, for us to know exactly where it's going to take us because uh, it's, it's almost one of those instances where it's down with whoever's up. One of the, thing that, one of the things that Donald Trump has to worry about uh, could be, has he been up so long that maybe he's lost his edge? Yeah. That's why he's got to continue to be as outrageous as he is. And then finally, um, listen, we talk about all these national issues. What about uh, this congressional race? A lot of thinking going on, a lot of talking. I'm told they have to raise about two million dollars yeah. uh, to be able to get into this uh, into this race. Uh, who do you, do you see anybody coming into the forefront? That uh, I mean, obviously Claudia Tenney 
is in, and, and this other Jim Oak is in, too. But uh, beyond that, what do you think? Well, you know, you, I think you probably have to watch Joe Griffo uh, in all of this. You know, whether or not he wants to give up his seniority in the, in the Senate. Uh, but, you know, Griffo, Tony Pacenti, um, you know, I don't know that, I, and I haven't spoken to them about this directly, but, you know, Tony is really in a, in a perfect position, you know, to be a county executive at a time of tremendous change, to be able to lead it, you know, as well as to have it as part of his legacy, makes me doubtful he'd run. But, you know, those are the two folks to watch. Um, on the Democratic side, and I think I said it uh, to you uh, the, la- <clears throat> the last time, you know, you have to watch Anthony Brindisi. Um, now, he's got very young kids. Yeah. Uh, that's a factor. Um, he's building for himself a p- nice path uh, in Albany. Maybe this is too soon uh, for him to be thinking about Washington. But I think if he jumps in, he, he becomes very, very formidable. Do you think there's a chance that you'll see uh, Griffo versus Brindisi in uh, in November? Um, sure. You know, uh, you know, I don't. Uh, of course, I'm, I'm, we're kind of discounting what may come out of Broome County or... Right, right. Or and what well, could come out of uh, uh, Claudia as well. Yes. Um, but, you know, for Claudia, it, traditionally that the harder-edged ideological conservative uh, can do well but generally falls short in, in a Republican primary. General election's a different story. If it looks yeah. like <laughs> Claudia is, has a clear path, winning path, uh, watch for... Uh, moderate Republicans and Democrats to rally behind a Democratic candidate okay. or even an independent candidate. Yeah. So, John, just uh, two things. Uh, Jim Rondinelli was at uh, Tony Pacenti's uh, swearing in for his new term, and he told me at that uh, event he did not officially say that he would not run for Congress, but the whole theme was another four years and what he wanted to accomplish. Mm-hmm. And uh, he also said you know, that, that he felt that this was the best job for him at this time, yeah. talking about the county executive's race. I had a question, though. Somehow I'm on a, a mailing list, or maybe it's the, the news department, but this comes from Claudia for Congress. There were several emails that came out toward the end of last week pushing this uh, please donate. Deadline, deadline, Yeah, Alert. this 1159 yeah. deadline on December 31st to hit our goal. Yes. Uh, what, what That's all a, PR crap. I mean, I, 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 that's that's a way. That's the new way of raising money. I'll let John speak to that, but and, and it is, and I'm on everybody's list. Yeah. Um. And and uh, everybody was raising money. That's for your filing deadline, yeah. and that's to show one of those things to you know to, to be able to report that uh, that you are very competitive. Okay. Because the you know the first report shows that uh, either smokes out some candidates or. It, you know, enhances your credibility. So it's a it's a reporting deadline. Okay. Reporting, but on top of that, it's, oh, it's a collection deadline. Collection. And you have to report. Yeah. And and the and and we you know in terms of advertising and collecting money and raising money, these we love deadlines. We love yeah. it. Absolutely has to be in by midnight here. Right. I mean that's a that's a great way of you know give five dollars, give two dollars, give whatever you can 2, give. Twenty five hundred, I think it's, is what it was. Uh, the twenty five hundred was the low on that one though. Did you see that, yeah. John? This it was um, the high. 20, oh, that was the high. Seven was the high. That, you could even that was the high, as I recall. Oh, okay, all right, yeah, all right. Interesting stuff, though. Lots. We'll be talking. What a year! All right, John Zabi, ZabiAnalytics.com. We appreciate your time. Thanks so much. Take care.